Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. We're back with another depotting video. I have a couple different palettes to depot. If you haven't watched my palette declutter series, um, I'll leave those two videos linked down below, but that's how I kind of came up with which palettes I'm gonna depot. I'm excited because there are some really great shadows in a lot of these and I can't wait to kind of let them escape the prison that is the palettes they're in currently. These are gonna make awesome singles for when I'm building out palettes, the pastels. I'm excited to kind of like hopefully reinvigorate my love for the Zulu palette from Juvia's Place. This is like a Fenty palette that's like a face and eye palette. I have a plastic single packaging. I don't know how that's gonna go. I don't know. <laughs> and then I also have this Ace Beauté Flare palette, which is so stunning. I'm just not using it enough. And I think potentially this might also make for better singles. So that's where I'm at. And this is what I have to depot today. I'm gonna give a bit of a disclaimer like I did at the beginning of my last depotting video, which if you haven't seen that, I will also link it. But depotting isn't for everyone. And I definitely think that if there's a palette that you really like and you think you might get use out of it from singles and you've already bought it, maybe it might be right for you. But I've also had times in the past where I depot stuff and I still don't use it and I still just end up getting rid of it. And after you depot something, it obviously doesn't have the packaging and it's not really able to be passed along as much. So I think it's smart to really think about the palette. Are you gonna use these shadows? Do you really think that you should depot them or should you maybe let go now? <laughs> you know, maybe get a little more real with yourself and pass it on. I don't know, just something to consider because I've just been there before. I've depotted before and it's been like worse, you know, like I wish I had it in the packaging. So I just like to bring that up because I don't think it's a solution for all situations or for everyone. That being said, let's get into it. I'm going to be doing, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing first, but if I need to, I might split this up into two parts because I just don't know how long it's going to take and be. So let's do maybe circle pans first and then we'll do squares. So I'm gonna start with this Fenty palette. This is really quite pretty. I love this center shade here. This center shade is so pretty. I like love it and I'd love to have it as a single. There's also some great like bronzes. That's not like super unique, but it's still beautiful. And I'd love to potentially even get more use out of some of the other shades. These two aren't my favorite. I probably won't keep these. That's another thing that's kind of nice about depotting is shades that don't work for you. You don't have to keep any more. So let's try to get this thing torn apart. For this, I think I'm mostly gonna use a knife, that's what I used last time and it worked out pretty well. If I start kind of taking this off the base. I like to be pretty careful because sometimes shadows, you know, like you don't wanna crack them by putting too much pressure on pulling stuff up. All right, so here we are underneath. This is what it looks like. It's been glued down around the edges. And now that we have this kind of taken off from the base, get rid of that for now. Um, and then we kind of have this pizza <laughs> that we can start unwrapping. And this is gonna get us down to what I've learned is what happens is, as you can see here, there's like layers of cardboard that make up the palette. And once you kind of peel off this decorative packaging, you then can kind of dig in to the layers. And when I'm doing this, I like to get down to the base of it so I can easily get under each shadow without again, cracking anything. can get one of these loose. So now that this is flat, if you can see, like the shadow is just hanging on right there. So I'll shove, this is like a little palette knife. I'll, I'll try to link some of the supplies I use. I mean, this is literally like a knife. <laughs> That's just a butter knife. A lot of you guys said you'll like soak this in alcohol and then it's like easy to just pick off, which is totally a uh, way you could do it also. Ah. Uh, Here's our first shadow. Here's what the bottom looks like. We have like the glue on there. Um, so we'll try to get that off. It's kind of a big spot of glue. And I'm making sure that I'm only getting the shades I want. So I'm only getting these five. I'm gonna leave those two. 
This one I kind of just peeled off and it worked out actually. So I might take my chances and see if I can peel some of the other ones off. All right, I've gotten these off. Oh no, they're like sticking to the paper. Like I said, they're just not good enough to keep, honestly. Like I have so many amazing shadows like this that I don't want to keep these. So, so here's all the packaging that's all destroyed. And here are my single shadows. Like how much nicer is that? So much nicer. I think that I'm gonna actually completely clean these and then go into more palettes like as we go. So I like to clean the base of the glue all the way off because when we put them into like our palettes and um, let's see actually, oh, they're magnetic on their own, you guys. That's a miracle. I don't have to worry about putting magnets on these, but still I don't want the residue on my magnet and all that. So I like to take, um, this is just alcohol. And then I use Q-tips. Of course you can use something else. I just think that it's nice. Like, I don't know. I like doing it that way. So that's what I do. I'm gonna attempt to keep my station here relatively clean. <laughs> we'll see, cause the alcohol kind of gets everywhere, but I usually pour it into the cap and then I just get to work. So what I'll do is I'll like soak the bottom here like that, which some of you guys said you like set it in a tray essentially and have them soak, which I think would also work really well. I don't mind. I mean, this is kind of tedious, but sometimes it's kind of relaxing to do it this way. I don't know. It's like satisfying. I just like it, okay? <laughs> and I like to just get a coating on so that way they can start to, um, like the alcohol can start working on it. I'll just start working. This one's kind of the smallest. So I just use some pressure and like small circular motions and just start working that glue off of the shadows. <laughs> and it depends, um, but yeah, I'm gonna get all the glue off. It's pretty interesting. This glue is definitely tough, like tough to get off. All right, so I've finished my first one and that's kind of as clean as I can get it. I know it looks dirty, but there really isn't any like texture on it and that's what I'm looking for. And like I said, it's so nice because they're already magnetic. So they already fit in and these are gonna fit really nicely with my JD Glow shadows. So that's the Fenty, that's a JD Glow and they're gonna fit just so nice. And uh, now on to all the others. Okay guys, so here we are. I have finished up cleaning off the bottoms. It's so nice that they all uh, stick on without magnets. That is like the best. And I thought I would just swatch the shades for you. Why not, right? So this is the one that I was like for sure wanting to save. It is so stunning. Ooh, like <laughs> so pretty. And I don't have like names, so sorry. I don't like care about the name that they were in the palette. It's about the shade, you know? But that's like a really pretty bronze. This shade is more of like a satin. It's so beautiful. And I think it works well, honestly, with this like tiny color story we have going on. Next is this orange. It's like another satiny type shade with a bit of like a golden flip to it. And then there's this beautiful blue. 
All of them are so, so pretty, and I'm excited to incorporate them into my singles and start incorporating them into like my duping out palettes and all that. I really think these are gonna get a lot more use in that way, and I think specifically this color is gonna get so much more use in just tons of different looks because of how unique it is. It's so pretty. It reminds me of the JD Glow. So this is unexpected from JD Glow. You guys know that's like one of my favorites. Like we all know this at this point. And then this one is Good God, which is another one of my absolute favorites. And then this is just something like kind of in between, like, I don't know, it just reminds me of those shadows. It's more like rosy taupey and it doesn't have as much like glitter dimension, but it's so pretty. So those are the five shadows I've saved. Let's work on the Juvia's Place shadows. All right, so here we are with the Juvia's Place Zulu palette. I mean, the packaging is so cute, so I feel bad to get rid of that, but it's about making these more usable for myself, so it is what it is. These are also the same size as like the Fenty ones, so I think these will also pair really nicely with the other shades that I have, and we're just gonna get into it. All right, getting it down to the, uh, you know, pans where they're gonna be easy to slide under was pretty easy. Now, I will say I've had this palette a while, so maybe the glue is like more dried out. I don't know if that has absolutely anything to do with it, but let's see what this looks like under there. Okay, yeah, so that's what one of the shadows looks like. It has the glue, but there is a bit of the, um, paper stuck to it. So what I'm gonna do, soaking really helps. Like, <laughs> it helps so much. So as I like get these off, I'm gonna start the soaking process already. And I just put a little bit of alcohol and then set that down and keep going. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. Some didn't come off, but what I realized is they are just kind of stickers, so then other ones completely came off clean, awesome, and these don't stick in the pans, unfortunately. I had a feeling they wouldn't because the bottoms of these pans are so different from the Fenty. They're just not as strong, and usually when they have that kind of like indent like that in the bottom, that means they're not gonna be magnetized already. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom us in and I'll get to cleaning. Okay, so we have the shadows. A few thoughts I thought I'd let you know from doing it. It is best to like get those stickers off basically dry or barely any alcohol, maybe enough to like pull it up a little bit if it's a little stiff. But if you have too much, it's almost worse when it's too gummy. So yeah, <laughs> just something I thought I'd say. But so here they are. When I first was gonna do this, I was actually only gonna keep the matte shades. So these are all the mattes and then these are shimmers. And I initially was gonna get rid of the shimmers and just keep the mattes, but I think I'm gonna keep them all for now. I'm planning on doing a single shadow like clean up and declutter, especially after I get all these depotted. And I need to order a few more palettes just so that I have the room and in the way that I wanna organize as I can. 
and I'm gonna take you along as I do that kind of organization and all that stuff. And seeing them, they're so pretty, so I kinda wanna keep them for now. I will say I did have one casualty. This one got a little crack in it, but it seems like the rest of it is in pretty good shape, so hopefully it won't lead to more cracking. I hate that so much. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to add some magnets to the backs of these. I just have little square ones, so hopefully those are kind of like strong enough to handle it. I'm probably gonna actually clean the backs off one more time with alcohol just to make sure they completely stick and there's no powder or anything. But yeah, I'm gonna add the stickers. All right guys, so here is the palette. I think it looks so awesome. I'm so excited they fit like perfectly in this one, just for now. This isn't where they will stay forever, but I thought since we're here, I might as well rearrange this in a way that I think looks a little better. So I'm gonna do that now. Well, I'm not really sure I like that that much <laughs> better, but I'm so excited for some of these mats. I guess I didn't swatch the mats for you or anything. I'll do that right now. But I have such a large collection of JD Glow and I don't have any mats from them. So to give you like an overview, these are all my JD Glow shadows, which I do have a video on. So I'll leave that linked if you wanna see them swatched in detail. But some of these mattes are gonna pair so nicely with some of those shimmers. And I think it's gonna be really fun to play with. And I love that they're the same size. You know, I'm not a huge fan of these big pans, but um, I do think it's nice when pans are the same size as other pans, you know? So anyway, let me swatch some of these mattes for you. I'm just gonna swatch the Juvia's Place so you guys can see what they look like. And that is the Zulu palette. It's so pretty. Like seeing it swatched here, I actually get more inspiration from it than from inside that packaging. And again, I'm actually glad to have these colors in my collection, just in a different way. All right, our work table is starting to get pretty gross. <laughs> it's getting pretty stained. I think the last palette that I'm gonna work with today and actually destroy is this one, the Beauty Bay Pastel Palette. It is so pretty. There are so many great pastel shades in here and I definitely wanna make these singles. I think I'll get a lot more use out of them than in this little palette because I would want to like single out probably this pink and put it with really pretty shimmers and all that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing with this. The reason I'm not gonna go into these two is I still have like this is so many shadows, but also I forgot that I want to do the Sugar Crystal palette, which also has like a ton of shadows in it, but I don't want to do this palette yet. I have another video I'm going to film with this before I destroy it. So um, yeah, that should be coming soon, like the video I have for this, um, but I can do these two palettes together. Um, yeah, there's just so much. That's so much. <laughs> so this is going to be the last one for today. So let's get started on getting it opened. This one shouldn't be too tough because it's just that cardboard. And I'm pretty sure these are not going to be magnet, like magnetic, like I'm almost positive. Wow, look how different these look against a darker background than they do against the white. They almost look more like pigmented. That was not easy. <laughs> uh, that was like the hardest one, which is so funny because I feel like this is like the cheapest of the cheap of palettes, but it was hard to get that out. I 
think this one might just be a goner. It's cracked, you guys. And I find it sometimes hard just to press them. So I'm not gonna worry about that one. Oh man, but it makes me wanna be extra specially careful with the rest. Okay, that was another one that was pretty overall easy. They were those glue dots again. So here are all the shadows. All of them were okay except for the pink one, which should we just crush up a little bit more since it's a goner? Let's just do it. I never get to do this, but it is kind of satisfying. <laughs> I don't know how to repress something tightly in a square pan, so, and I don't have any circle pans just hanging around. So, it's unfortunate that this broke, but what you gonna do? It's what the risk is. So, if you're not, you know, okay with some of your shadows getting busted, then depotting might not be right for you. Okay, but for as for these, they just had the glue dot, which was amazing because that's pretty simple to get off. This is pretty funny though. This one is actually like bent. Like the pan itself is like tweaked. So it doesn't lie flat on the table, if you can see. <laughs> Uh, it's a very, I mean, this is a very cheap palette. Basically, I'm just gonna clean these off. I'm gonna add stickers and put them in a palette. So this is the palette. I'm really excited. These look so, so pretty outside that packaging. And that, you know, it's fine. That packaging was fine, honestly, but it makes me way more excited. Let me give you some swatches. All right, so there are the swatches. Definitely pastels. I wouldn't say these are the most pigmented, but for the price, I'm not too upset about it, you know? And the time I have used them, they actually worked. So I'm excited to continue to get more use out of them now that they're not in the palette. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me, destroying some makeup palettes. I know you guys enjoyed the last one a lot, so I hope this one was just as enjoyable. I'm sure you guys will wanna see the part three, I guess we could call it, of the other palettes that I have, but yeah, let me know if you wanna see that, and I'll try to get that up for you sooner rather than later, but um, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you then, bye.